Hi, I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Today we're continuing work on our Invest Arms Gamer Hawken kit. Full disclosure, I want to say muzzleloaders.com did give me a discount on the kit that we're using in this video, but that is not by any means affecting my commentary about the kit. If you have any questions about this, please leave them in the comments below this video or shoot me an email. I prefer the comments though, uh, if anybody has any questions, especially about this particular aspect, because I can answer them publicly and transparently. I've been spending a lot of time this morning cleaning up some odds and ends from the previous videos, uh, just taking care of some stuff that's a little tedious and a little slow. Um, mainly working around my lock mortise and my side plate face here. Um, you'll notice previously I'd mentioned that my, my lock mortise and my side plate side here weren't exactly even, uh, so I went ahead off camera and just cleaned those up so that they're a lot closer in length now. I'm much happier about that now. I know I kind of said that it didn't matter a whole lot, but um, it's kind of keeping me up at night. <laughs> I also came in here underneath my uh, trigger inlet here. I had a little bit of unevenness, so I cleaned that up. This area sits really tight against the trigger guard, so there isn't a whole lot uh, more that we can do there, but I just wanted to get rid of a, an odd bump that I saw here under my lock mortise. I bring these up as areas for you to check and, and maybe think about as you're working on your kit. Odds are though, you'll have different issues or, or different little things you wanna tidy up, but it's just good to go through and, and check for those. Back here also, if you remember, we had a weird bump between our trigger guard inlet and our trigger plate inlet. So I went through and flattened that out. So it's now on the same plane as kind of going back into our toe plate here. I also cleaned up the edges a bit around our cheek piece. So we're ready now, uh, I believe, pretty much from here back uh, to kind of go into a final cleanup process, at least as the, as the wood is concerned. And with that, we'll start cleaning up the hardware so that we get nice flush mounts before we come back and do a, a, a final cleanup pass on the stock. Back underneath here, underneath my four stock, I, I, I hold my flint locks pretty close to the lock here, especially when I'm shooting offhand. So I took care of an odd bump that we had in there uh, and that's gone now. So we're ready to move on now to cleaning up the barrel channel here a little bit and tightening it up. Uh, so we get a little bit of a more refined look out of this kit uh, than it is as it comes, which is the nature of kits. What I want to move on to next as far as stock cleanup here is uh, the top of our stock here in regards to the barrel channel. You can see here we have a lot of machine tool marks here at the top of our barrel inlet on both sides and even kind of back here which will be behind our lock. These lines are a real indicator of what I would call workmanship on these kits. Uh, again, this is another thing that you don't need to do. If you're putting this together as your first muzzleloader, you have uh, you know, a muzzleloader tag or something out west, or you're just getting started, you by no means have to go into this much detail, like I say. But this is a nice little thing that you can do to elevate the quality of your kit. So I'm gonna pop out my my tang here, my breech, just so we can get into this area much easier. Setting that to the side in my parts bin. And then I'm grabbing a half round file here. This is pretty fine. If you, if you only have a fine in a course, you're gonna to wanna to use your fine for this. Our goal here is not to remove a bunch of wood. Our goal here is just to remove these ridges so we have a nice even plane all the way down here. But we don't wanna remove so much that we start to get waves in our stock because this wood is gonna show up against our barrel. So we want to continue to allow it to be straight and not mess up that straight line. So this takes a little bit of patience, but it's really gonna, um, you know, as people look at your kit and uh, inspect it, it's gonna be a little bit harder. It's gonna look for them to see that it's a kit uh, and it's gonna look a lot nicer. So I'm very gently, you see I got a little bit of a tear out there on my wood, so I'm gonna switch sides. And here I'm using my half round so I can get up in here very gently. And I'm mindful of where the other side of my file is. You see there I've taken away a little bit of wood. So I need to come back on my file some and come in here. Now realistically, thinking about it, this might be the kind of thing that's better served with a strip of sandpaper. This is some 120 grit backed by your file. It's important as we continue uh, with the stock cleanup process that you're backing your sandpaper with your file because that's gonna give you a nice rigid surface 
so that your sanding is nice and even. And we'll talk about this more as we continue on this process. We can see here, I'm just keeping the file nice and flat against the wood and really gently, really gently stroking that file. Again, trying to keep the file at an angle the best I can. And once I have that curve cleaned up there, I'm gonna flip my file over so I have my flat side down. And I'm gonna continue with this process up the stock. Now you can see here, I'm now connecting with my other side here. This is gonna help me keep all of this even so my barrel channel doesn't get wavy uh, along the barrel. We want this to be nice and straight, nice and flat, just like the original Hawkins. We're applying just enough pressure to get rid of those machine marks. I'm come back in here with my half round a little bit. Touch that up. I'm going to do the same thing back here. This will be really behind our cock. But it's a nice little detail that we can add ourselves. Taking that extra little bit of care with our kit. I think I've said it a lot in this process here, but um, you know, your first muzzle loader, it really will last you a lifetime if you take care of it and you, and you treat it well. And I think when it comes to building your own, uh, all that is in the same, uh, it's in the same field. If you want this to last you forever and you want to be proud of it, you know, put the time in at up front and uh, you'll never, uh, you'll never go back. So I'm going to continue this process all the way up the barrel channel and then we're going to talk about uh, thinning these lines up here uh, next to our barrel channel to give us a sleeker, lighter look. And as we get out here, uh, really towards the end, there's less and less of that uh, machine texture there. So really just kind of going across that with our sandpaper. Looking at the top of our nose cap out here, we have a little bit of differentiation between it and our wood. Um, because this up here is so delicate, we'll, uh, we'll address this with our hardware cleanup. You can see there up close some how that looks now that we've cleaned up those marks. I just really like doing that. It's just a really simple step that comes in here and uh, gives it a, you know, just continues to finish the kit, gives it a nicer polished look here. What we want to do now is thin up a little bit of this barrel channel here. You can see we're pretty thick back in here. We get pretty thin out here as we go up the forestock, but I want to thin that up just a hair more. Uh, and when I mean a hair, I, I really do just mean a hair. We want to bring this line around uh, so that we have a nice, even connection with our barrel. So to do that, I'm going to gently, because we have our barrel out, you'll notice, so our stock is very light. And it's much weaker in this state than if it had its barrel in there. But uh, when we get to this point, it's just easier to work this without the barrel in. So I've gently clamped it in the vise back here in the wrist. And I'm going to start on this face here. So you can see we have some file marks up in here a little bit. We're going to gently take those out here. I'm using a pretty large fine file for this. You can use a smaller uh, flat file for this uh, as long as it's fine because like I said we don't want to take off a bunch of wood here. If you only have a fine half round use the flat face of that. It, 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 it's really up to you as to what, what piece you want. What we're going to do here is allow our file to kind of rock on our stock here where we've been working it because we want our file to come around that curve. So what I'm going to do is start by working from the mortise forward and then I'll come back in and blend in this mortise area where it's a bit thicker back in here. So I'm just running my file at an angle kind of on this top third. So if we, if we kind of picture our stock having a, a line going through it here and then a line going through it back here. We kind of think about it in thirds. I'm just using this on this top third here where our stock interacts with our barrel. And I want to run all along this, all along the barrel channel here, just like we have with everything else. Actually, I'm going to bump this back so I'm holding on to the mortise a little bit. I'm treating that just like a plane. 
we're just taking off a little bit of wood at a time. Just kind of going with that stroke. Again, this is another detail that will help you elevate the quality of what, uh, what you're building. I think, at least. This is, a, this is a design element that I think matters. Especially if you're looking to continue with your muzzleloader building down the road. So I'm going to come up here and be a little more aggressive with my angle. Kind of come in here and blend that. I'm going to come in here and blend that initial line in. I notice I'm tearing quite a bit, so I'm going to come in from the other direction as I continue. I'm kind of at a 45 degree angle now on the bevel of our barrel channel. It's kind of wrapping up that last eighth or sixteenth of an inch. I'm going to flip it up here and show you in comparison to our other side now. You can see how much lighter and how crisp this is over here compared to this side over here. We've taken off just about half of it. But as we, you know, kind of handle this and rotate it around, a lot of that material is still there. It's just been up at this edge that we've cleaned that up so that it looks, uh, it looks a little bit lighter without sacrificing uh, that thickness and strength. So I'm going to come up in here in front of my mortise, uh, get that to match and blend a little bit better, and then we'll do the other side. Because my hand is, is my off hand is really going to be up here a lot. I like to make sure that this area is right. It's comfortable in the hand. There aren't any bumps or ridges. Because as I'm shooting, it'll start to become irritating. So now we'll just repeat the same thing on the other side here. And uh, we'll be just about ready to go. Like everything on this kit, it's by hand, uh, so you're not going to get it perfect. I don't know that you want to necessarily. Um, I think, well, I want them to be close. You know, I don't want it to look like I worked one side and not the other. But I'm not going to come in here uh, with a micrometer or anything and check this <laughs> to make sure both sides are the same thickness. I'm really just eyeballing this. This back in here needs a little bit of work. So come in here with a half round. That allows me to get up closer to that mortise a little more appropriately. Here's a little bit of an overview look at that. I mean, I don't think it's exact everywhere, but I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about it. I could knock it down just a hair more, um, which I may do once we kind of get into the sanding process. But um, right now, I'm, I'm feeling okay about it. As I'm looking at it, though, here from the top, I'm noticing some bumps in my forestock that I want to work on. Got a little bit around that, looks like. Just to straighten this up some more, I got one right there. I'll clean these up off camera. Uh, I think you guys have watched a lot of filing uh, by this point. But uh, this is just another one of those times where I like to go through after I've done a bunch of work, come around and check it, and mark some things that need to come down or need to be adjusted.